Hello and welcome back to All Automation Professionals. In this video, I want to continue building our knowledge and understanding of factory IO by introducing an advanced element, which is going to be processing what's called raw materials inside of the software. And so the idea here is going to be to discover the process just as you would in the real world environment. So a lot of your job consists of understanding the process, how it functions, whether it is to troubleshoot, whether it is to add a new feature. But the idea here is for me to show you how I would approach understanding a process from the beginning. And the goal of that is going to be in the subsequent videos to automate parts of the process. So without any further delay, let's get started. So one of the features of factory IO is going to be, as I've mentioned, using these raw materials that you can transform into what's called lids or bases. And then you can essentially combine the two for a finished product. And the example of that, or a simple, maybe manufacturing process that incorporates that would be, let's say a conveyor of empty boxes that needs to be combined with finished goods or finished bottles. So for example, you have six bottles that need to go into a box. So there's going to be, let's say a loader arm, a machine, or it could be a case packer arm that will combine the two. And the finished product is going to be a box of your finished materials. So this is aiming to simulate exactly that. And so to get started with this process, what I need to do is find the machining center because that's what's going to transform the raw ingredient into a lid or a base. So you'll see here on the right hand side, I have the machining center. And if I drag it out, it's going to be a little bit intimidating. It is quite a large cell, which contains a robotic arm as well as a CNC machine. We can certainly use the shortcut of Y, which we've used a couple of times in the past to rotate the cell and position it accordingly. And so you'll notice a couple of things at first glance. So as I mentioned, there's going to be a robot arm. There's going to be a CNC machine on the side. There's going to be a conveyor slope down, which indicates the entry point. So you want the product to sort of slide in and on the output, there's going to be a conveyor that is sloped outwards, which allows the product that has been processed by the robot to slide out again on a hypothetical conveyor that's going to take it to the next process. And that's something we'll look in a different video. That being said, there's also a control panel. So this panel is going to contain the start to stop as well as the reset push buttons. It also has an emergency stop. So just like you would find in a normal manufacturing environment, those are standard buttons that you can control. At this point, they are connected into the machining center. This is not something that I can edit. That being said, I could tie in these signals into my PLC. And so I could create a program that would automatically start, let's say reset and stop this machining center. But in the real world scenario, again, this could be push buttons. It could be an HMI or it could be signals from somewhere else. So how does this system actually work? So as I've alluded to this a couple of times now, there's going to be these raw materials on the right hand side that you can see. So there's going to be three different colors, the blue, the green, as well as the metal. And as you feed them inside of this machine center, it can either produce lids or it can produce bases. So depending on the selection, we will see that in just a moment, it's going to output one or the other. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to drag out one of these blue uh, raw materials. I'm going to start the scene and without changing anything else, I'm going to drag this and I'm going to struggle a little bit to place it onto that conveyor and I'm going to hit the reset key and the start key. So what you will notice is that the robot is going to pick up that raw material. It's going to load that into the CNC. Again, this is something you would see in a manufacturing environment, but if you are not in something that transforms via a CNC, think of this as let's say a box erector, right? So this creates a box that will be then placed on the conveyor into which you could place other finished goods created through some other process. And so you'll notice that at the exit, we have this slightly weird looking material. Obviously the CNC machine shaved off a little bit. And so now this is called a base. If I stop and if I re-enable the scenario, I can create a change in the bit. So again, we are going to look at some of the signals on the CNC machine and that's going to be is busy, has error, produce lids, 
opened and progress. And so you'll notice that for whatever reason, you can't click through them uh, through the fence. So you can either jump and try and get them or you can switch into fly camera mode and you can just go over the fence. And we need to select this produce lids um, input. So I'm going to switch back to first person view. Now that I have that selected, I want to force that on. Again, once we automate on the PLC side, we will be able to change this dynamically. But for now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a lid. So I'm going to simply place this into the conveyor. Again, struggling just a little bit. And then I'm going to reset my system and I'm going to start the system. And hopefully this will create a lid. So while that's doing that, I just want to mention that the easy solution, as you can already imagine, would be to have two different cells, one of which creates LEDs, and then the other one creates bases. The challenge and the fun of automation is obviously to maybe slightly overcomplicate things, but ultimately, if you can create both products with the same cell, you're saving the company money. Therefore, you can also create a process through which you would be creating both of those products using the same exact cell. And as you can see, that is going to be our lid, which is going to close off on that base that we've seen a little bit earlier. So before we jump into automation, there's going to be a little bit of an obvious thing that we can correct immediately. So I'm going to remove that floating plate. I'm going to add a conveyor belt. So we've looked at some conveyor belts in the past. So I can select this four meter long conveyor. Actually, maybe that's a little bit too long for what we're trying to do right now. Let's make this two meter long and I'm going to press Y to rotate. Once again, paying attention to the indicators of where the product is moving. And on the conveyor, I want to place what's called an emitter. So again, we've looked at this in the past. I want to make sure that it is oriented exactly how I want. I also want to lower that using the shortcut V. I'm going to place that right there. And as we've seen again in the past, I can right click on my emitter and I want to select that I want no base. I never want to see a palette. I don't want to see a square palette part to emit. So in this case, we want to create a blue raw material. Again, you have the option of blue, green or metal raw material whatever you would like to choose. Again, we can complicate this in many other ways. So that's going to be the raw material that's going to come out of this. We can certainly change the time. Let's see if that makes a difference. Actually, I'm a little bit curious myself. So I'm going to play this. I We obviously need to enable the conveyor. So let's see here, belt conveyor, force that in. We're going to have to reset the robot and then start the robot. And I think that it's only going to take the first tablet. Uh, they've made it fairly straightforward where this should back up and it's not going to create any new tablets. So we shouldn't be too concerned with how it is bringing them in, at least for now. So it's going to create our base. Actually, I think it's set to a lid and it's going to reject that part at the reject side. And if we let it go, it should just continue creating that product. I don't remember if there's a need to reset between product. That is something we can certainly automate. So you'll see that now we need to press start. So if I press start, the process is going to reset once again. So the robot is going to pick up the part. It's going to send it in and it's going to create the exact same uh, part that we've just created. I want to try and changing the uh, produce lid versus produce base bit and see if it actually takes it after it is done. So I'm going to let it completely finish. So we need to have the signal that is not busy to be off. And then we're going to toggle that and we're going to re enable the process. So once the robot is back, it's going to be not busy. Actually, it looks like it stays busy. So I'm going to stop the process completely. Press the E stop button. I'm going to deforce or I'm going to actually toggle this to a low. I'm going to release e-stop, press the reset, and let's see if that works. I've had a little bit of trouble with uh, toggling it this way, so I want to double check what happens. And I believe it's going to be a problem. It's not going to process the raw material.
So as you can see, it simply rejects the raw material. I'm not sure why it's not letting me change that in run. Let's see if the same happens to the second uh, part. So I'm going to start that once again. And this time, I believe it should be correct. So this may be a challenge for us to automate. So if the part is not going to be a lid or it's not going to be a base, that is something we need to take care of. We need to reject downstream of the process. So let's see if it actually closes and creates the part that we need. And I can then maybe demonstrate a very briefly what the assembly process is going to look like. So as you can see, we have both parts. We have the base and the lid at the output. And so ultimately what needs to happen is this is going to go on top of the product. And as you can see, again, I'm going to struggle assembling it a little bit, um, but both parts should be able to combine maybe not through manual intervention, but through robotics into a single finished product. In any case, that's all we're going to do in this specific video. Hopefully the machining center makes a little bit more sense for those of you who have not used it. Once again, just to recap, this is a process that you would see as an automation engineer, technician, or mechanic in the real world scenario. It may not always be a robot as well as a CNC machine, but you often have different products that are sent through the conveyor that need to be combined into a single product. So the goal in the next video is going to be to automate a little bit of this process, tie it into the PLC and be able to streamline how we create both of those products that are going to be the base as well as the lid in factory IO. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you next time.